<laughs> Hello you guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about quite the cool object. So, as we know, we can... Uh, so, I'm sorry, let me get that more in the center. So, as you know, we can take a curve and we can rotate it across an axis to create a shape right like if we had the root curve we could rotate the root curve around and thus this becomes almost a three-dimensional shape like a little acorn if you will okay and so in the same way we can rotate really any function around the x-axis okay and so if we rotate the function one over x around the x-axis which is a function that kind of looks like this oh, sorry that's not very good um Really, it's called the reciprocal. It's the. Uh, it's not good either. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the greatest artist, so it's really like that. We'll say that looks good, right? And so if we rotate this curve around the x-axis, we're gonna get something that looks like this, right? A little shape, kind of. If we imagine some discs going through it. It's going to look like this. And this is going to continue with a horizontal asymptote over here, or vertical. And the same thing goes here, right? Okay? And so, what's interesting about this shape, and we're going to call this function here, we'll say f of x is equal to 1 over x, right? And so, this function, or this shape rather, is called Gabriel's horn. Let me see if I can draw a little bit of a better depiction. And so the idea is that this is going to continue on forever. And you kind of see how it's like a little horn here. And so what's interesting is that using improper integrals, we can say that this shape is paradoxical because it has a finite volume, yet an infinite surface area. And you might be saying, Jacob, how, how could this have a finite volume if it's going to just continue like this forever with these getting infinitely close to zero? And so... We can prove that here. And so we know that the, vo and so I'm gonna just erase part of our depiction here. And I'm gonna just redraw it a little bit, if you will. I'm sorry, it's the fifth time. Kind of looks like this. Beautiful. There's our little horn. And here's this. You can imagine the x axis going through here. Cool. And so we know that our function we use to create Gabriel's horn is y equals 1 over x. Or the same thing as f of x equals 1 over x. And we know this because, obviously, this passes the vertical line test, okay? And let me make sure you guys can see that. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to use the disk method, right? And we remember that to find a volume by disks, I'm going to write that out here. Disks is going to be volume equals pi integral from a to b of our radius, which is f of x squared dx okay and so now implementing that with this we can say that the volume of gabriel's horn let me retitle this i'm sure you guys can see that and we can say that the volume of gabriel's horn thus is the integral from pi or integral of pi times the integral from okay where is this going to start we're going to say it starts at um i think it's zero <laughs> second mm -hmm. i'm sorry not at zero we're gonna it actually is undefined at zero so we're gonna start to get at one actually my bad from one to infinity, right? Positive infinity, because we're going this way. We can, yeah, there you go. And so we're going to say it's this, and we're going to say it's of f of x squared, so 1 over x quantity squared dx. And can we all agree that this, this is it? So now I'm going to erase this. I'm going to write it a little bigger for you guys to see bright and center. Get it right here, I think looks good. So we'll say that. The volume is equal to pi integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. And if you remember, we can say that 1 over x quantity squared 
the same thing as squaring this and squaring this, which is just one over x squared, right? And that's kind of how I'm making that connection there. Let me make sure so you guys can see that. Oh, nothing I can do. Sorry. So now we know improper integrals, we kind of have to do some fiddling. And we almost have to do like what I call a kind of a cheat. And so we're going to actually say that this is pi. And we can put the pi in front of our limit, as we know, because it's just an arbitrary constant. And then we're going to say this is from now 1 to b of 1 over x squared dx. OK. And so now you might be saying, OK, what now? Now we can say that if we take the antiderivative, this is pi limit as b approaches infinity of, okay, what's the antiderivative of 1 over x squared? Let's use the reverse product rule. So integral of 1 over x squared, we can say that this is the same thing as dx. Sorry, yep, my notation is kind of sloppy. dx, add 1, divide by that power, negative 1 over x, right? And so now we're going to say that this is the same thing as negative 1 over x evaluate it from 1 to b, okay? And so now if we continue here, we're going to have pi limit, limit, forgetting my l's today, as negative from negative 1 over b minus negative 1 over 1, right? And we all agree that I'm just evaluating it here. I'm just plugging in b, subtracting 1, okay? So now let's kind of figure this out. As the bottom gets infinitely large. As this becomes infinitely large, we know that this is going to become really small because you can think about this as like, okay, we have 1 over 2, and then da-da-da-da, 1 over 1,000, da-da-da-da, 1 over like a million, right? And that's a really, really, really small number because we know as the denominator grows, the, numer the uh, sum of the fraction, I guess, is going to shrink. So now with some simplification, we can say, okay, this is going to be 0. And we can say minus negative 1 over 1. That's the same thing as just saying plus 1, right? So now we have limit as b approaches infinity of 1 times pi, which means this is pi. And so we have just pro proved that Gabriel's horn, which is the f uh, shape created by rotating 1 over x across the x-axis, which we can you and we can find the volume of said shape using disks. And we've now said that this shape has a finite volume that is pi. There will be a future video on the surface area that shows that the surface area, in fact, is infinite. So stay tuned. Thanks.